Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Today, we are giving you a long-term update on my supercharged Toyota 4Runner. If you're new to the channel or you haven't watched the series, this is my 2014 Toyota 4Runner. It was originally a limited model that I converted over to this beautiful TRD SR5 spec and it's been so good, like I love the conversion on it. As you can see, it is a little dirty. There is mud and salt falling off of it because we are in the middle of winter. It's freezing cold outside, but uh, really one of the coolest things that I did on this truck is under the hood. As you can see, I don't often open the hood because this is a Toyota. It is extremely reliable, and that's why we've got fall happening here. It's your driveway trees. It is, man. I've got the trees and I haven't opened and, and really checked underneath the hood here. We'll have to clean this out, DP. This is a Magnuson supercharger. Uh, if you, again, haven't watched the video series, go back and watch the, the first episode. You'll see us install this thing and it, it was a, a treat to put on. Very, very OEM. And now living with it for almost seven months, it's been tremendous. I absolutely love it. I highly recommend it. I have not had a single issue with it at all. It produces almost 80 horsepower over stock and 75 foot pounds of torque, which really brings this truck to life. We'll go for a ride in a bit and I'll show you again how it feels like in, in the power department. One of the questions that I often get asked is how has the gas mileage been? So many people are worried if they're bolting on a supercharger like this that the gas mileage is going to drop dramatically. And the answer is it has not been affected much at all. Actually, I don't really see a change in the gas mileage and that's because I'm cruising on the highway the majority of my drive. I'm not flooring it at every stoplight. So my gas mileage does stay the same and, and for the most of you it will unless you're flooring this thing consistently so and I will say the gas mileage on this truck is not great I'm getting anywhere between uh, 14 to 18 miles per gallon in the winter time it drops down to like that 14 which is in uh, in metric I think 15 liters for 100 kilometers or up in that like 17 to 18 liters for 100 kilometers Ooh, so it's thirsty huh? it, it, it is it's it's not an efficient truck but I'll trade it any day to have the reliability as I've had with this thing. I have not had to do anything on this truck mechanically uh, since we've worked on it and since I've purchased it. So it's been fantastic and I've added about 10,000 kilometers, so about 6,000 miles on this thing without any, any problems. Some of you may be wondering, what is this weird silver looking thing going on here? And uh, this is my ghetto form of a block off plate for the transmission oil cooler. If you guys remember, we did put a massive uh, oil cooler for the transmission on here because we are using a coil rad and it wasn't integrated in it. And it would be running very, very cold right now. Like we are in, at minus 17 degrees Celsius, which is super, super cold. And it would just take a long time for the transmission to heat up. We do have a thermostatic uh, adapter sandwich plate here. so it technically wouldn't circulate the oil until it's warmed up, but it, this still overcools. So all I did is I took a piece of cardboard, taped, uh, did a bunch of uh, aluminum foil tape around it, and it's been working well for me. When we shot this video series, a lot of comments came through about the condition and the rust of this vehicle, and it's not particularly that old, this being a 2014, but it, because it is in the rust belt, this is truly a result of, of what happens. This is what most vehicles look like, especially Toyotas, they just don't have great corrosion protection and they do rust tremendously. Uh, and what has happened lately is this here, this pin that holds the door hinge on has started rusting really badly too. And you can see I sprayed a bunch of lithium grease on it to kind of keep it lubed up. I don't think that is good for corrosion protection. So 
DP, why don't we just like quickly clean this up? Surprisingly, a lot of that rust cleaned right off. As you can see, it was just surface rust, which is kind of nice. It didn't stain the, the paint at all. Yeah. And what I'm gonna do is come in here with a bit of my favorite secret sauce, the, the fluid film, which is a great rust protection and uh, corrosion penetrant, but it also works well as a lubricant. So I think in this type of situation, this is gonna be a win-win for me everywhere. So I'm just, you know, I'm just gonna go liberal on it. Get it on there, PP. That's right. Let's just protect this thing, done. Give it a quick little wipe up here. One of the other areas that I have had issues with, and uh, if you guys watch the, the series would know, is I ended up getting these door handles painted in this satin black finish. Um, and because they were chrome and I really didn't like the way everything matched. The trouble that I've run into is the black, as you can see, has been peeling on me in areas. And this has been kind of consistent all around the truck and it's only been on this piece here, which I don't know why, like these pieces here are perfect. They, they haven't uh, uh, peeled at all, but this piece has. So what I've been doing is I've been coming in and using some Plasti Dip to, to cover up the chrome that's showing. And really what I think I'm gonna do is I'm, I'm just gonna go and replace these in the future with proper black ones. You can buy these in black. The, the struggle was the Limited does have the push lock and unlock feature on them. So you just can't get a regular SR5 when you do need the upgraded one. But I think the new TRD models do come like this. So I can certainly replace these. However, I'll show you what uh, what my trick's been with the Plasti Dip. This certainly isn't a perfect match, but it does mask it better than having that uh, silver showing through. And if your eye is keen, you will see I've done a huge portion here. So this is already peeled on me once. And now what I do is just come in, do this, and then go over this a couple times once it dries. Like the Picasso of Plasti Dip here, PT. Look at this. Just working it with that tiny brush. No prep. Like I'm a just, master. I was gonna say spray and pray, but uh, I'm painting and praying here. The nice thing is the, uh, the Plasti Dip does dry rather flat as it should. So anytime you get a bunch of running and dripping, it, it usually sucks itself up and, and it doesn't look bad. It's not perfect. Remember, not perfect here. This door handle's looking really bad and that's because I went through a, uh, a car wash and I'm sure it blasted the heck out of this here. I made uh, all the paint chip off. See, from five feet, can't even tell the difference. If you guys certainly have uh, any tips or tricks on using an alternative to Plasti Dip, certainly let me know in the comments. Look at this, DP. This this is what we deal with. Yep. You bring a car inside, and in half an hour, the slush. And look at the amount of dirt nasty, that eh? like just builds up on the chassis. And then you know why things rot so badly. One of the other things that I have been pleasantly surprised with on this vehicle has been these uh, retrofit source Morimoto headlights. They have been just so, so great in terms of output uh, of light versus the stock ones. And in the summertime, I wasn't using this truck a lot at night, so I didn't really get to see the, the massive performance increase. But now that the days have been short and long in the winter time, uh, I've been driving quite a bit at night and the output on these is stunning paired with these uh, fog lights, just it lights up the road, which is, I, I couldn't say the same thing with the OEM ones. And of course, <laughs> they just look so cool. They just have like a, a, such a fresh uh, updated look. And let me show you the turn signals. They are super cool too. I now have them set up. In oh, nice. This, yeah, in this sequential mode. So you can see it just lights up so nicely. So. Um, it, you know, they're not cheap by any means, but I think they're worth every penny if you do a lot of night driving or out in the country and the visibility of the, the factory lights is not working for you. One of the other key upgrades that were made on this truck was the Eibach Pro Coilovers and they've been a, a huge success. I've absolutely loved the way they do ride. And of course our power stop brakes, which were uh, upgraded pads and rotors and they've been fantastic. They took care of all of that mush in the, in the brake pedal that I had in the past. I am on a, a set of General Tire Grabber Arctic LT winter tires. 
which I, I do really like. They, they have that aggressive like off-road truck tire look, but they are meant for the winter, which is awesome. And of course, these TRD uh, wheels in bronze, which have been my winter go-to setup. So with all that talking, I think it is time we actually take this thing for a ride and we can talk further about the, the quality of, of ride, the handling and all that stuff. And here we are on the mean streets of Hamilton, one of the, uh, dare I say, Ontario's worst roads. Possibly. Yes. They gotta be up there. They <laughs> are. In North America's worst roads. Look, we'll do, we're, we're gonna pound some uh, <laughs> nasty snow here. Yeah. And look at this suspension, DP. Soaking it up Dude, pretty just good. Soaking it up. Yep. The guy behind me probably thinks I'm drunk or crazy because yeah, exactly. uh, I'm riding the curb almost. Snow banks. But you can see the suspension has just been so flawless, so compliant, mm -hmm. and you know, I have no bad things to say about it. Like really there is no negative other than, you know, the cost and installation. Right. And that's it. That is it. I think the ride quality has improved from a smooth road, rough road scenario. There isn't excessive body roll. In fact, as we proved in the build series, we got a w rid of that breaking nosedive issue that this truck really suffered from. So yeah, it I hasn't changed my opinion of it in any way. It rides really, really nicely. It really does. It and gives me envy. My Tundra needs these. <laughs> yes. And uh, I'll touch on the brakes again. Before, there was just a lot of nothing, 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 and then it tried to grab. And, and part of it was the brakes were you know, almost at their uh, wear point. And the, the other problem was it's just an inherent issue I find. I drove this truck brand new in uh, in 2014 when they came out when I was living in California and I, it had like just the the pad compound they're using I don't think is great it's very mild and, yeah and I mean, now you're used to performance pads but you got to think about soccer moms maybe they want a really soft pedal very fair that, that could be part of it very very fair um, but going to the the power stop setup has really transformed the confidence that I have in these brakes. Mm -hmm. You can see when I get on it. Oh yeah. See like That's look really that good. was that was ABS there. Yeah. Yeah. Because it does grab and it and it bites quickly, right? Yeah. Let's flex a little bit of that supercharger. Ooh. Oh sounds yeah. good, eh? Yeah man. And, it's got more supercharger wine than my Lexus does. It, it does. It, it picks up it's very progressive which is what I really like about it. Um, and <laughs> the one small little gripe that I do have and this is just me being cheap is it requires premium gas yeah. and with the cost of gas these days i've got to add like 10 to 15 dollars onto every fill uh versus the the regular gas so you know i don't know though really in a year that's probably a couple hundred bucks i think more probably more than that maybe, maybe, maybe five six hundred dollars that's what i was going to say dude, roughly the power and the exactly noise, like, like you, you that's just, a good trade-off you, you can't even think about that as being a real negative no so it just stings when you sit there and you watch that pump you're like, woo, wow, we are over 100, 110. It, it are we going to hit 120? Yeah, it's more psychological than it is, I think, actually a, a, a significant financial penalty. I mean, if you can afford a supercharged 4Runner, yeah, you can afford a few hundred right. bucks more exactly. in gas. Let's, let's be exactly. honest about it, but it still stings. Yes. We feel your pain, everybody. We know gas prices are, like everything else these days, suffering a little bit of inflation. Exactly. And if this car uh, van doesn't slow down here, we're going to go over these railroad Ooh, tracks and watch yeah. this. Yeah, no it problem. Really it just nice. takes them. It's just so compliant. It is. It really, really it is. It doesn't get upset. Like it doesn't de-weight a lot. No. And it and it controls the the bump yeah. really well too. Yeah, I love it. Okay, you ready to feel this thing? Ooh. Oh, the aggressive Whoa, dash and wheel spin. That was wheel spin. Oh yeah. It goes pretty good, man. Wow. Compared to a stock Forerunner, that and is look, a lot And now the brakes heavier. work really well, so we're yeah. back down to speed. But yeah. the wine, the power, it's, yeah. it's all there. It Great is. package. It's, it's certainly a well-balanced package, I think. You know, we haven't really overpowered the chassis. Or no, not at all. Many things go uh, awry in that no, sense. No, it feels a lot livelier than it did stock, though. No question yes. about it. And it is a truck that is underpowered stock. I think it's safe to say. Severely, yes. It, it feels pretty slow. These are very wanted trucks and they do get stolen quite a bit. I actually have, if you look down b beside your knee there, yeah. there should be a club. Yes. Right here. Let's pull this thing out. This is what <laughs> I rock wow, on a school. daily basis. SUV truck club. Yeah. I have not seen one of these from like since the 90s. Guys are like hacking in through the OBD2 ports. You can get a lock for that. I haven't really found one yet for that, but okay. it's just 
people are stealing these things. Yeah. So better, better safe than sorry. I've For put sure. a lot of time and effort in this. No thing. doubt, no doubt. The other thing I've been getting a lot of questions on is the Forerunner, a worthwhile purchase. Mm -hmm. uh, coming from the VW Touareg where I had reliability, reliability issues. To say the least. Yes, <laughs> I, I certainly think this thing has been you know, such a weight off my back in terms of not having to worry about anything breaking. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the strongest suit of buying a Forerunner. Or any Toyota. Or really. any Toyota, yeah, yeah, is that you know this thing is going to run, it's gonna be reliable, you're not gonna have issues, it's not gonna leave you stranded, you yeah. know, for 90%, 98% of the people that own these things. They're, they're just, they're flawless, they run so well, and there's a reason why they've been around for almost 20 years in this, you know, generation of truck, right? And that's probably what drives their resale value too, is just people want to reliable, dependable yeah. car that's, you know, gonna be relatively low ownership cost once you've bought it, because it's not gonna need yeah, a lot of maintenance. Yeah, yeah. They are actually expensive though to buy. When I was they looking are. at these, you know, I, I I bought this for rather cheap for $25,000 Canadian, so around 20,000 uh, US, and that was like at the bottom tier of what you could pick up a 2014 for. So it, that is one of the things to consider if you wanna get into a 4Runner, it is a pricey, uh, you know, spend but on the flip side when you do turn around and sell it you're going to be selling it for you know a premium over something like my vw that was almost half the the amount of money yeah right so it's kind of like you're parking your money yes. for the most part unless you're just putting you know two hundred thousand miles on it these things seem to hold their value regardless of mileage too yeah it's kind of remarkable how well they hold their value but i agree with you it's like it's a money in money out scenario where yes you're spending that money up front but then you'll get it back when you sell it there's certainly pros and cons to it but i think the pros certainly outweigh the cons for your use case i mean you got the baby seats in the back here that's right you're, yeah. uh, you're living that family life and, and it I, seems to work well and i do love the size of this thing it's kind of like yeah. the perfect size it's not too big yeah. where you're constantly worried that you're going to mm -hmm. be bumping into stuff and it's not too small where you can't load up eight tires into the back yeah. or you know haul a bunch of stuff around or so. tow the occasional race yes. car yes yes yeah, so it's, really it's, from you know my perspective i'm sure your perspective too this is and for as an all-purpose vehicle pretty much as good as it gets. Yeah, it's very hard to beat. So, you know, for, for things to look for, really, it, it just comes down to, you know, rust. If you're in a, a rust belt area, then rust is certainly an item that you want to look over. Not every one of these is going to be super, super rusty. Some are worse. I, like, I looked at, I think, five or six before I settled on this one. This one was the least rustiest one that I came across. Mm -hmm. um, there were ones that were way more rusty. So, uh, that to me would be you know one of the downfalls that you got to look for but otherwise like you know crash damage yeah repaint exactly. the usual sprays, stuff. like the usual stuff that you would look for make sure the ball joints the suspension everything is good right yeah yeah i mean it's a tricky one too because obviously if you don't live in the rust belt you're not going to have rust issues to look for we live in probably one of the most severe areas yeah. for rust because we salt the road so aggressively here so even if you live out say in British Columbia where they don't salt the roads, rust probably isn't that big yeah, of an issue. Exactly. But, uh, so all you're dealing with is really, you know, just make sure everything, just check check it over, have a mechanic check it over. Coming from the, the Touareg, it is more of a Spartan interior, which I kind of like. You mm -hmm. don't have, you know, a ton of buttons. The Limited is actually, you know, the, the most digital climate control, that kind of stuff. But otherwise, like, it, it's it's very simple, you know, nice layout. I do like it for, from that perspective. But if you want more of a luxurious feel, yeah. then maybe the... Uh, what is it? The GX460 GX yeah. is, is a fantastic option, which is essentially a 4Runner, right? It, it's, it's a 4Runner with uh, the small V8. So it's got the 4.6 liter V8 that you can get in the Tundra or the Sequoia. Um, and that's an interesting package because you get the luxury of the Lexus brand. You get the, the V8 for a little bit more towing capacity. Right? It bumps it up from, this is 5,000 and it bumps, yes. that bumps up to 6,500, I believe it yep. is. And... Um, you get a bit more of like a urban, you know, setting style to it. It's sort of it's on airbags. Right. It's more. It has like more uh, street tires. Right. Like it is certainly built exactly for that. city living. Built for city living. So that that I think is is something to look at for sure. If uh, if the Forerunner doesn't necessarily suit your luxury needs, but and you otherwise, did look at those. Didn't I did. You? I did. I just don't. I'm not in love with the styling. Yeah, they so, look a very little narrow and tall to me. Yes, I, yes, they do. So I, I don't love them. I think the new generation looks very Lexus-esque with those huge front grills. So I think mm. those are pretty cool. Yeah. But otherwise, I'm not fully in love with them. I certainly prefer the looks to this. So, you know, this has such a, like a, a classic, traditional, like off-road, hardcore look, look yeah. to it. And yeah. I think that's why they're still so popular versus 
those and there's a, a considerable price bump yes right yes with the, the, with the lexus, lexus so more money and there's probably far fewer of them too yes yes so not yes, easy to yes. find one that is going to be a wrap on this one thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed the long-term update on the forerunner and of course post in the comments let me know what you guys think of the forerunner is it a worthwhile truck to own are you a hard pass on it all right guys we will see you in the next one Welcome back. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Today, we are giving you an update on my supercharged Toyota 4Runner. I didn't say long term. <laughs>